Hello everyone. In this short video, we are going to talk about a grade level adjustment or intensity adjustment for an image. So if you have a gray scale image, all black, white, and shades of gray, one of the simplest thing you can do is to change the brightness. So basically, if uh, the function that you define is like TFP equal P plus beta, where P is the input pixel light intensity or brightness, and TFP, so this is the input, TFP is the output of this transformation, the output pixel value or the adjusted picture or the modified picture, where TFP is whatever P was plus some extra constant where if beta is positive it means you are uh, shifting up the light intensity if it's negative it means you are bringing down the image and making it darker so the other thing you have to keep in mind is the um, limits the saturation limits you know if the image is u int 8 unsigned integer 8 bits then the maximum value you can have is 255 and the minimum is zero. So you can never get, by adding beta, you can never get any value above 255 or below zero, right? Because if this line is shifted beta units up, it should look like this. And guess what? These two areas are outside the region. So we trim it down to only this line segment, and if you bring it down again, you will have two parts of this line out of the region, and you have to, again, trim those portions because they are outside the region. So keep that in mind. And again, positive beta means making the image brighter, while negative beta means making the image what? darker so that's a simple thing you can do to change the brightness of an image and here i show you in matlab so here i read the image called peppers converted to grayscale using rgb to gray so i read it with im read convert it and then here i use a beta this beta could be anywhere between 0 to 255 i use 100 either positive or negative and it will can change my image to a darker version because beta is negative. And then I show you the result. So let's take a look here. Just show you this portion. And you clearly can see the original image on the left in grayscale and the darker version on the right. Correct? If I make beta positive, let's say make it positive 100, then definitely I would get what? I would get a brighter image compared to the original one. So here we go. You clearly can see that. It's much brighter than this. So this is what? This is a brightness adjustment. The next thing we can do is contrast. Contrast is... Uh, if I want to define it very simply, is basically the spread of the light intensities over the entire range of possible values. And if I want to define it mathematically, there are so many different ways to do it. Like one of them is called the Michelson contrast. The reason I did not bring the formulas here is because there are so many of them and I don't want to get into discussion of each and every one of them and how they are differing from the, uh, each other. But like, for example, this one is like I max minus I mean divided by the summation. And these are the maximum and minimum light intensity values, which can be in the range 0 to 255. Correct, so the image light intensity range divided by the summation of those. Correct, so if I have the range of light intensities, right, to be, for example, like this originally, a very, very good contrast. 
where this ratio is uh, uh, practically 1, right? Because max is 255, mean is 0. Then if I multiply each pixel light intensity by a constant like alpha, then alpha bigger than 1 will change the slope of the line from 1 to 1 to something bigger than 1 to 1. So now, if you can see here, your I minimum is still 0, but your I maximum goes from a number here that was less than 255 to now 255. So what does it do? It increases your I maximum. If your I minimum is 0, whatever the I maximum becomes, it's not going to change the contrast. So if we go with the simple definition of Michelson, then multiplying by a constant, as long as the minimum of the image is 0, is not going to change the contrast. It just literally is going to make the pixels brighter. Because even mid-bright pixels are now going to be fully bright. And if you multiply by alpha less than 1, again, what it does, it brings down the maximum I from 255 to now something smaller than that, makes the whole image dark, okay, not equally. Last time we added the, sum, the same number to all different light intensity values, this time no. The bigger the light intensities are here, uh, right, or the smaller they are, the amount of change in them is linearly increasing. <clears throat> but again, if you go with Michelson's contrast measure, multiplying by a constant is not going to do anything. But that's not the only measure that we have. We have another thing called the Weber contrast, where you have I minus IB divided by IB. What is I? What is IB? So if you want this I, you can call it IF. This is the foreground uh, luminance or average luminance. This is the background. So this is where you're looking at one feature, one object, one foreground object against some maybe probably darker background. And the difference between the luminance of foreground and background normalized by the background um, average light intensity is what you call Weber contrast, right? And what it does is, uh, let's say here, if I want to show you with that method, and let's say alpha is bigger than 1, so let's say here this is I of B, this is I of F, right? They were here originally. Right? But now <clears throat> they go to these new values. So this becomes I prime of B versus this I of B. And this one was I of F. Here. Now it becomes this one, I prime of F. And if you look at the changes, the change in I F is much bigger than I B. So it makes the foreground be brighter, much more brighter compared to the background. And that adds to the contrast. So if we go with the Weber measure, then definitely multiplying by a constant bigger than 1 is bumping up the contrast. While with Michelson, not necessarily. Okay, And if we multiply by less than uh, 1 alpha, again based on Weber, you are making the contrast go down. Right? Contrast is a measure really, if you want to put it in plain English, is how nicely, how easily you can distinguish something against the rest of the objects. That's why mathematically formulating it is not that simple. It's easy to describe it quantitatively, but mathematically there are so many different ways to do it. There is another one called RMS contrast. 
which is basically root mean squared. So here you subtract each pixel's light intensity, i, i, and j, from the average light intensity. And then you square it up where the summation goes over i and j, all rows and columns, divided by the total number of pixels, m and n, number of pixels in rows and uh, columns, and then take the square root. This is another measure, RMS contrast. Okay, and if we, again, use the same measure that I said, what's going to happen? When I increase the light intensities by multiplying by alpha bigger than 1, all of these numbers are going to go up. So this one is going to go up by alpha, this one is going to go up by alpha. Right? Every pixel is multiplied by alpha. So the whole thing will be multiplied by alpha. And definitely alpha bigger than 1 means bigger contrast. Alpha less than 1 means less contrast. So you see these two measures would tell us that multiplication by alpha bigger than 1 means bigger contrast, and less than 1 means less contrast. This one doesn't. But again, these are different measures for contrast measurement. Um, and uh, you have to note that RMS contrast and uh, Michelson contrast are easy to calculate. Weber is not, because for Weber, you have to know what is a background, what is a foreground. And for that, you need to do image segmentation, which is a hard topic of its own. Or you have to use a pers ask a person to manually uh, find the regions and um, delineate the regions, find the boundaries of the regions of foreground and background, and then you do some masking and averaging. So Weber's contrast measure is not easy to calculate in practice. Anyways, so if I want to show you how this multiplication by alpha is happening in MATLAB. Let me show you that. So here I read another image called Barbara. And uh, the first thing I do, this Barbara's image has light intensities uh, that are not all the way down to zero, all the way all to 255. So literally less than 20 and more than 225 it has very few pixels so the first thing i did i applied some threshold to the image and kind of cleaned those two areas up what do i mean by that let me show you so here let me first clean up everything if i read the image and we'll, we'll get to this histogram later, but let me just show you what I mean. So these are the light intensities of this image. This is called the histogram, and we'll see that. If you see here, the pixel light intensities never go all the way to 250. And their minimums are not going all the way down to zero. Literally below here, which is about 20, you only have very few pixels. So what I can do, I can trim out these very few pixels below 20 and almost above 225. There is nothing here in this region. So I do some hard trimming, right, and threw away those pixels by this operation that you can see here some thresholding saturation so now if I show you the histogram one more time look what happens this time now those very few pixels I had in this area they are all gone I clean them up and definitely not above 225 here uh, from this pixel to the right there is nothing so I did a little bit of cleaning, so I can show you better the um, notion of multiplying by alpha. And one other thing I did here is, because if you look at this image here, if you look at this graph here, the distribution of light intensities for me 
are going anywhere from 0 to 255. This is like my input. While my image was not like that, I have only this portion and this portion is like a trapezoid, right? I don't have light intensities all over the place. So another thing I did here is, as I told you, I only have this region, right? Let me catch it. What I did, because this was like the minimum I, and this was like the maximum, which I artificially forced them to be 20 and 225. So the first thing I do, I first make this minimum go down to zero. If I want to do that, I have to subtract 20 units from all pixels, which bring this 225 now down to 205. So now this guy will be shifted a little bit, what, to the left, just like uh, what you can see in these images. So first thing I do, I convert this trapezoid, bring it a little bit down, so now it becomes like this. Still my maximum 255 is here, this is 205. So now what I can do, if I multiply each pixel in the image by the ratio of 255 divided by 205, then this guy will go to 255, the zero stays where it is, and the whole range will be what? Will be spread all over from zero to 255. So what did I do here? My T of P is gonna be whatever P was minus the minimum of the P's. I did a subtraction and then multiplied by some alpha. What was the alpha? The alpha was max p, uh, or it was actually 255, divided by max p minus min p. And when you do this kind of linear relation, not only you have multiplied by alpha, you also stretch the range of the values that was initially from 20 to 225. Now I force it to be from 0 to 255. So for that, not only I have enhanced the contrast because I multiplied by an alpha which is bigger than 1, I have also brought down the range to full range, and that is what we call normalization. So my image was like this. This was the spread of the light intensities, and now I force it to be like this one. So what I'm about to show you is including, it includes both normalization and in normalization, you definitely have a what? You definitely have a color and a, sorry a um, contrast adjustment which is enhancing the contrast because alpha is bigger than one so here I'm going to show you this normalization and adjustment both together and this is what you see I have done here alpha is 255 divided by max minus min and then the contrast version of the image is alpha times the image minus the min of the image. The only thing you would see here new is using this double and u int 8 several times. And you might say, what are these? Well, here I have to explain the typecasting I used here. When I say max of image and min of image, remember my image is u int 8. It's only 0 to 250. When I subtract this, it gives me a number, like what? It was 225 minus 20, 205. So this number is 205 unsigned integer. 
when I divide 255 by 205, the ratio is definitely bigger than 1, right? The ratio is 1.2439. But guess what? When I ask how much is alpha, MATLAB is going to show me 1 instead of 1.24. Why? Because I'm basically in MATLAB, since the data is uint8, it cannot take 1.24. Remember, it's uint8, it's integer. It cannot have decimals. And when I'm dealing with numbers and u int 8 and everything, it makes the final number to also be a u int 8. So it forcibly makes my alpha to be from this decimal number to an integer number. And when alpha is 1, practically I'm not doing anything. I want an alpha bigger than 1. So what do I do? I here force this number from u int 8, force it to be a double, and double can have decimals. So now this whole ratio can have what? Decimals. Take a look here. So I get these. When I calculate alpha, look at that. Alpha is what? You see, 1.2439. When if I remove this double, look what happens. Look here. You see? It says alpha is not double anymore. It's u int 8, and it rounds this number truncated to 1 or rounded to 1. So here you do have to use some typecasting and use double. One other thing I have seen some people do, and that's a very proper step. When they read the image and convert it to RGB or anything, before anything else, they convert it to double right here. So they make their numbers to be able to take fractions. So in the rest of the code, they don't need to do the typecasting like I did. That's also acceptable. But just make sure when you're working with uint8 type of data, the image that you read, they cannot have decimals, they cannot be negative. They can only be positive integers. So if you need to have fractions, you need to typecast them to double. So now I subtract them in, multiply by alpha, and then you might say, what is this u int 8 again here? Well, now I'm multiplying a double by a u int 8, and there is a chance that this ratio has what? fractions in it, this number, and if it does, by typecasting it into u int 8, I make sure the output is of type u int 8 like the original image, so I can easily show it. Okay, although if the image is double, all you need to add to a double image is to use comma and empty brackets, so it shows it full scale. But here, I want to keep my input and outputs all u int 8, so that's why I'm doing typecasting. And now look at what's going to happen. So here I am going to show you the image, right? Let's take a look at that. Okay, it seemed like I have changed some part of the code for some reason. Let's make sure. There we go. Okay, I don't need this. I want this one. So here is the normalization contrast adjustment with alpha of 1.24. If you look at these two images, it might not be very, very easy to see, but definitely the image on the right 
if you look at the dark spots, they are darker, and if you look at the white spots, they are whiter. If you can see them side by side in this region, if you look, the white areas, this is much whiter, and if you look at these areas that are black here is much darker. And that is contrast, right? If you have darker darks and whiter whites or brighter whites, that is bigger contrast compared to everything is kind of closed together shades of gray. So you see this image clearly shows a better contrast compared to this one, right? And if you look at, again, their histograms, which I have to explain to you in a second, one of them would look only covering a portion of the range 0 to 255. One of them covers the entire range. But I'll hold on to that until we get to the histogram. So uh, this is about what normalization and uh, contrast enhancement and brightness enhancement. The other interesting thing we have is called negation. So if your image goes from 0 to 255, all you need to do is, again, to apply a linear transformation on it, where alpha is negative 1 and beta is 255. It goes from this distribution to this distribution. So what happens here? If you had a pixel that was very dark, zero, right? Now it is very bright. And if you had a pixel that was very bright, now it is very dark. So it's negating, making whites black and blacks white, changing the light intensities, inverting it. It's called negation, right? or invert, you might see in uh, Paint or uh, Photoshop, it's called inverting an image. So let me show you that one as well, that's here, right? And you clearly can see that the black hair is now white hair, right? These black areas of the shells are white, and the white, uh, let's say carpet or something, is now black, or this tablecloth is black. So this is called what? negating image which is kind of like artistic effect okay that's about that and uh, finally before histogram we have nonlinear transformation for nonlinear transformation it's basically when the function from input to output pixel values is not a line it's not alpha times p plus beta then you are going to have curves as the output pixel values, right? And what you will see is these curves are either below the one-to-one -one line or uh, above it, or it might intersect it at points. And if they are all above or all below, they have good physical meanings. For example, you can use a power function or a logarithmic function if you use this logarithmic function with alpha being 255 divided by log or natural log of 256 what's the meaning of this kind of curve that is above your one-to-one -one line what does that mean if you look it means if you consider a similar stretch of pixel values on the inputs Right, so here, consider two similar stretches. One in the dark area where the pixel values are close to zero, one in the bright area close to 255. If you look at the outputs of these stretches, the range of the output for bright areas is much, much smaller than the range of the output for the dark areas. What does it mean? It means expand the dark areas and compress the bright areas. Not in terms of their special size, no. It means if the area is dark, make them much more brighter compared to an area that was what? Bright. Look, here, because this curve is above the line one to one, if you were bright, you will be brighter, right? Regardless, you will be brighter. 
if you were dark, you will still be brighter. So this uh, transformation will make every single pixel brighter at the end of the day. The whole picture will be brighter than what it was because the whole curve is above the line y equal uh, 255 or 1 times uh, t of p equal p, right? That's the equation of this line. Because the curve is above it, the whole picture will be what? Brighter. But if you look at the changes in the light intensity for dark pixels, they are much bigger compared to what you get for the bright pixels. So this transformation favors the dark pixels. It makes them much more brighter than it makes the bright pixels brighter. That's the meaning of expansion and compression. Doesn't mean if an area is dark, it's going to shrink. Not really. Okay? Of course, when it gets brighter, the boundaries of it might not be as visible as it used to be. And it's kind of like shrinking and, compre and expanding. But you might still be able to see those boundaries, but they are not as nice as they used to be. So let me show you an example of this one, which is this guy here. So here I applied that logarithmic function, and you see the whole image is brighter, but now if you look, this area, look at it. That was bright. It is brighter, but it has not changed as much as this area that was completely dark. Now it's almost mid-gray level. So this was that was close to like 0 or 20 or 30. Now is probably, you can check. Let me check with the data cursor. This area, the light intensity, let's look at it. The intensity was about 15. Now look at it. That's 138. So it jumped from 15 to 138. But this area, that was 216, is now what? 248. So that area jumped for 13 units. This area jumped for probably 120. So that is like expanding the dark areas and make them bigger, brighter areas, while the bright areas are not going to change so much. So still you can see the edges of what? Of the... Um, uh, legs and everything else but some of the edges might not be as visible like this edge here you see some kind of if i could draw for you you can see some kind of edge here a little bit here is not as visible so you might interpret it as shrinking and the fact that these two areas are now close to each other you might interpret it as expanding this dark into the bright area but overall, it makes the whole thing brighter, but in a nonlinear fashion. And if you say, what did it do to the contrast? I would say definitely it has brought down the contrast. You can see features a lot better here than here. Okay, so this is a nonlinear transformation. Finally, histogram of the image. It's basically a distribution of the light intensity values or gray level values and how many pixels do have those numbers? So you know the uh, pixel values for U int 8 images are 0 to 255. So you can break down this range of 256 values into a number of bins, a number of baskets. How many? Up to you. MATLAB has a default number. But what you do is you make a number of baskets. Let's say, for example, you have what you have 50 of them so 255 divided by 50 is about five so every five values let's say from zero to five you count how many pixels have light intensities between zero to five as many as you detect you show it on the y-axis it's called the frequency then you go five to ten again count how many pixels are five to ten it gives you maybe nine thousand you put it there and keep going for all the bins all the way to as the many as the max, let's say 255, and that's called a histogram. 
which is an approximation of the probability uh, distribution function. In MATLAB, the command I am hist can generate that histogram for you for an image. And uh, the histogram shows you a lot of useful information about the image. For example, if you have a histogram and it kind of looks like that, although most of the time it's a bunch of spikes, it's not something continuous like this, but if you have more or larger spikes on the dark area, means the image is a dark image, which means in terms of the capture, the image was underexposed. Or if you have a lot of spikes on the bright area, means the image is bright, maybe overexposed. If you have the light intensities clustered in one region and not spread all over the range of 0 to 255, that's a low contrast image. If it's well spread all over the place, as close as possible to a uniform distribution, that's a full contrast image, right? And then all of those operations we did on the image, you can see them on the histogram. So, for example, if you add a number like beta for in uh, brightness adjustment, it shifts the histogram without changing the shape of it, literally shifts it to the left if beta was negative or shift it to the right where beta was positive. If you multiply it by a number, then it's going to be stretched. So if the alpha is bigger than 1. If alpha is less than 1, then it's going to be shrunken. And if you do a normalization, then, then you take it from one range that is less than 0 to 255 all the way from 0 to 255. So this is the normalization. If you do invert, it's kind of like you're mirroring it with respect to the middle point. Right, so if I want to show you some mirroring also, I have to show you some mirroring, then, for example, if the shape is, let's say this is 255, and uh, again, this is also 250, uh, this is the frequency, I'm sorry, and this is the pixel value, light intensity. So if the shape is something like this, let's say, then, if you consider this the middle point, then it's going to be mirror with respect to this. So, this is going to be something like this. Right? So, this is negation. And, again, that's the good thing about histogram. You can compare the histogram of original image versus adjusted image, and you see the effect of all we did. So, first thing first, the command I am hist, as I said, will generate such plot for you. And you can see, for example, the image of the histogram of the image versus the dark image. So, let me show you that here. Uh, so, here we go. This is the uh, Pepper's image versus darker version, and these are the two histograms, original versus shifted. And if you look at them, the shapes are the same. You might say, well, the scales are not, the heights are not, they are. The only difference is here, the maximum here you have is 800. Here, the maximum you have is more than 5,000. So that's why, because the y-axis limit is much bigger here than here. This shape looks a little bit different than that, but if you change the range of the first graph also to go to 5,000, y-limit of that, then definitely they look the same with one difference. What is the difference? You can see here, this shape is from 0 to 2, let's say, 30 or 220 or something, while here, the maximum is about 130. So it's like this shape is shifted 100 units to the left, right? This whole shape is shifted 100 units to the left with the saturation at zero. That's what you can see here, right? And beta, remember, is negative 100 in this picture. So you clearly see the shift to the left. Or if I do, let's say, normalization or anything, um, let me show you those. So this is the negation I showed you, this here. This is the contrast uh, enhancement with normalization. 
This is the original image. This is the normalized image with contrast enhancement. And if you look at the distributions, you see here it goes from 20 to 225 on the left, while this one goes from 0 to what? 250. So clearly that shape is expanded in both directions, as you can see, comparing this against that, because the alpha was what? Bigger than 1. So definitely what happened to it? The um, expansion plus the minimum of that, that was not 0, was now shifted to 0. So what happened? The left point was, the whole uh, histogram was shifted a little bit to the left, and then what? So from here, basically, it went to here. There is a shift to the left, and then it was expanded to the full range, right? So this was your original image, and you went to this in normalization. This is the multiplication by a number bigger than 1. This is that subtraction from the mean value. Okay, so you can see all of that, and... I'm going to share this code that I wrote for you, the simple code I wrote for you. I can uh, share it with you on there the video descriptions. One other thing I wanted to show you before stopping the video is here, you see this nonlinear transformation. Now, if you look here into the shape of the histogram, definitely the shape is different. So if you apply a nonlinear transformation, it is going to change the shape of the histogram significantly. It's not going to just shift it or stretch it or shrink it. It's going to deform the shape of the histogram. But if you remember, I told you that this nonlinear transformation makes the whole image brighter, but it favors what? The darker pixels. It makes the darkers gets brighter more than it does on the bright side. And that's what you can see here. If you look this area, this area on the left, right, these two peaks, you can still see them here, but they are shifted way more to the right. Look, the peaks were around like what? Uh, some like 19 and 37 while they are now at 138 and 166. So the darker areas are expanded way more compared to, let's say, this peak. That was at 160. Now it's probably somewhere here, somewhere at, see if I can get a number there, if I can. Not easy, but it's around 230-ish, and this other one, that was in 215, now it is in 248. And clearly, you see these wide peaks are now narrow here. Look at this one on the right side. This is much narrower than this one. So these areas kind of shrank, and these sharp peaks are now wide peaks. So you can say these areas expanded. So it expands the dark areas and shrink what? The bright areas in the histogram. That's what you can do to explain this nonlinear transformation, this logarithm that I applied. So uh, hopefully that was useful to you. And uh, if you are also interested, there is a command in MATLAB called hist equal which basically applies what we call histogram equalization to an image. And histogram equalization means to take any existing histogram and then make it as close as possible to a uniform distribution. Because if you have a uniform distribution of light intensities in a histogram, that has one of the best, basically, uh, contrasts. So if you want to enhance the contrast of an image, you can apply a nonlinear transformation on the histogram and make the new histogram as close as possible to what? To a um, kind of uniform thing. I don't want to get into detail of that, what kind of nonlinear transformation you are applying and so on. But uh, if you are interested, Please take a look into the histogram equalization. 
So you just pass through the histogram, the image, and it gives you the histogram equalized version of the image, which you can see here. Look at this dark tire. This is the histogram equalized version of the tire using which you can see a lot of details you couldn't see here. Look at all these threads around the tire hop, right? You could not see it easily here. While well, because this one, we applied a lot of transformations and made the contrast much higher compared to this one. Okay, and this is the difference. This is the original histogram. This is the new histogram, which you see is way closer to a uniform compared to this kind of skewed histogram. So again, for your own interest, I don't want to get into the topic of histogram modification and equalization, but if you're interested, one of the commands you can do is called hist equal. Okay, thank you so much for your attention. I will see you in my next video. Thanks.